right, welcome back. Time for our next segment of the Steel 028 Wood Boss Rebuild. When we last left, I was had everything cleaned and ready for paint. So here it is. She's been completely refinished. And you can see my wife did a little dab of artwork here because this is going to be the new Trail Boss version of the 028. And what we did was I took it all apart and cleaned it and everything like you saw in the previous videos. And then I shot it with some white paint. And then I went back over it with three coats of polyurethane clear like you would use on an automobile. I had some leftover from some previous projects. And so I use that. I love clear coat. That stuff's awesome, especially the automotive grade. Don't go buy that spray can stuff. It's not hard. You need to get the automotive grade clear coat that you put a hardener in, and that, that really just locks it in, seals it up tight. And you can see here it's, that this has turned out just great. Pull that out there. I mean, I think it's just beautiful. She's ready to be uh, carefully reassembled. And that's what we're going to do next. We're going to start by putting in, in just basically reverse order of what we did in the other videos. I'm going to put the bearings back in. I'm going to put uh, this cover back together. Uh, I'm going to put the crankcase back in it, gasket, seals, all that stuff. You're going to see all that. And we're going to continue on with our videos. Okay. So here's all the bags with the parts that we took out of the wood boss. And it's a lot of parts. To somehow or another put back into this. And that's what we're going to do is I'm going to take all of these parts, clean them, make sure they're good to go, rebuild the carburetor, new seals, new rings, new everything, put it back in there and get it back going and it's all gonna fit back into this case. Somehow, some way, I'm not sure. I don't know how we're gonna do it, but we're gonna do it. Okay, so let's talk about the new parts that I bought for this saw. The new parts. Now, I don't want you to crucify me, okay? These are Chinese parts. Chinese aftermarket parts. Not my favorite thing. But they were so cheap that I could not pass it up. They may fail. I don't know. But I can tell you right now that what I'm looking at is as good as what I've taken out of the saw so far. Okay? So what I got here was, first of all, a new piston and jug and the big deal with this was why I went this route was originally this 028 wood balls from 1983 had a 42 millimeter piston and jug later on the 028 had a 44 miller, millimeter piston and jug and then the super had a 46 millimeter piston and jug. So for twenty dollars, twenty bucks, I got a jug and a piston and a set of rings for twenty bucks. So my thing was, you know, why not? I could put it on there and try it. And it's not like this saw is going to be run every single day of its life. It's going to be used on the trail. It's going to be the trail boss. It's not going to be uh, making a living out in the wood yard, burning every single day of its life. So I figured, hey, what, hey, I'll give it a try. You know, 20 bucks. You know, why not? I got the gaskets. I got the electronic coil where I can eliminate the points. I got a carburetor kit. I got the seals, gaskets, wrist pin, sauce gasket, fuel line, impulse line, a plug that I was missing, a fuel filter, not planning on using this fuel filter. I will probably, as of right now, the way I'm leaning is I will clean out the original and put it back in. I may change my mind. 
and the bearings. These bearings feel fine. Looking at them here. They feel fine, okay? They feel good. They're identical to what came out of the saw. Now, I can tell you that if you go on eBay and you look up a jug and a piston for this saw with a set of rings, you are going to pay $80 for the same thing I bought for $20. You're going to buy the same thing from them for $80. What they're doing is they're buying it for $20 from China and they're selling it to you for $80. That's what they're doing. So don't be fooled. That's what they're doing. So unless you're going to go to the steel chainsaw dealer and buy steel jug and piston, you're probably buying a Chinese bottle anyway. So why not? Let's give it a shot. You know, if it don't work out, I'll be the first one to admit I was wrong, and I'll put the 42 millimeter jug and piston back on it because it was not damaged at all. I'll just put new rings in it and put it back on. No big deal. I mean, you can see what I've done so far was taking it apart and putting a new jug and piston on it. It's nothing. So all the parts you see here, to completely redo this all, bearings, jug, piston, gaskets, seals, ignition, carburetor kit, the whole works, I got $50 in it. Shipping and all, dude, 50 bucks. All right, now that we've done talking about the parts and all that, and we've gotten that out of the way, we'll talk about putting the bearings back in, the new bearings. And this is the big one. And you can see here that when I painted the case, that of course, you know, paint will get in here on this bearing surface. So I real lightly cleaned that up. I wanted to make sure that there was nothing in there to be too big. And you know, you read online about, um, heating this up and heating the case and putting your bearings in the freezer and, and all that. And, and I guess that works if that's what you need to do. But uh, we're going to take and work on uh, tapping this bearing back in. And I'm going to support this up a little bit more. Maybe right here. I don't know. We'll, we'll give it some support and, and I'll show you me tapping this baby back in, okay? Okay, so I need to come over to the back of my vise to where it's kind of like a little anvil there because sitting flat there, I didn't have enough clearance. So now it'll sit right on there. I'm not hitting anything. I just got to give the back of this housing some support. All right, we're going to put that on there like that. And this is where you can mess up, okay? If you get in too big of a hurry or you get too big of a hammer, and you, you, it's easy to mess up. So I'm just going to lightly, I want to emphasize lightly, get it started because it's, it's real easy to get your bearing crooked at the beginning. And if you get it crooked and you try to force it in with the hammer or with the punch, you know, you're just going to damage your case. And you know, this is a, what I understand these chainsaws are made out of magnesium. And so this has got to be a relatively soft metal. And it's not going to take a lot of beating. It's not going to take a lot of abuse. So let's just light. See, and I've been doing mechanic work long enough that I can feel the bearing going in. You can just give it light taps. See, there's a big difference between that and that. When you hit something solid, there's no give. But when you just like that. see, she's trying to go in there now, and I'm not care. I gotta be careful with it to get crooked, okay? All right. Now I know what some of you are gonna say. Those of you who are experienced mechanics will say you shouldn't be hitting on the bearing period or not with a brass hammer because you put little pieces of brass down in there. And that's true. That's true. But I will tap on it with one to get it started and get it straight and make sure we're good before I do this. She's 
going in. And I'm basically using the weight of the hammer with just a little, that's all. And the trick is how you support the back side of it. See? That's it. Did you hear that? You know that sound changed? She's in. And all you would do if you continue to hit it is you break something. It's in there. It's all the way in. You can tell by the feel and the sound of the hammer. She's in. All the way. I'll give it one more little tap just to prove it. One more little tap. Make sure I'm supported there. One more. One more little tap. Let's make sure we're back on there straight. That's good, right there. One more little tap. See, that's the end. That's all the way down. Any more and you'll break something. You'll do damage. That's perfect, man. Perfect. Now here's where your seal's gonna go down in there. That'll be later, after we put the crankcase back together, we'll put the seals in. One bearing in. All right, same thing again with this one. Let's see if we can support it back here. Now this is, because of where all the points and all that go, this one is a little more, uh, it's a little weaker back here, okay? It's a little weaker. All right, but I believe that's gonna support it fine right there. And again, don't, I'm not going to go crazy with the hammer, okay? That is just the most important part is being gentle, you know? I guess that's one of my pet peeves, this whole get a bigger hammer mentality. Just want to make sure I'm on there good. I'm just going to give this a light tap. Get her started straight. Looks pretty good. Back on there. I'll use the same punch. Same same technique. I'm gonna hit it and just give a little wrist flick. Alright, it's a little crooked, okay? Just a little. This side over here closest to me is a little high. Oh yeah. There she goes. Again, I'm not hitting it hard. Don't hit it hard. Hear how it has a hollow sound when you hit it? That means it's moving. 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 Bottom. 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 She's all the way in now. Perfect. Oh yeah, man. She's all the way in. Hey. All right. So I've got my oil can here, and what I did was I cleaned out all the lubricating oil that I normally keep in there, and I put in some uh, two-cycle engine oil like you would mix in with the gas, and this is what I'm going to put on the bearings. Here, got my gasket here. Everything's ready to go back together. Uh, let's see here. I got some sealer. This is, is the orange high-temp stuff, but it is black, and it's good up to 500 degrees. This is what I have already, and that's what I'm going to use. If it messes up, I'll do something different, but I don't think it will. It's going to be fine. So, here's my bearings. Here's my oil. I'm going to make sure I lubricate all of this before I put the gasket on in the sealer and reassemble everything. Okay. Oh, yeah. Feels good. Same thing with this one. Reach it here. Get me some two cycle oil in there to give it some lubrication. Give it a spin. Feels fantastic. 
All right. All right, so again, let's get this oriented correctly. This is right side up, left side up. All right, so which way does this thing go? Flywheel is on this side. The clutch and all that is on this side. And you can tell because this has left-hand threads on it. So you know that's where the clutch goes on and the nut and all that goes here, okay? Need to remember that. This is where your sprocket and your needle bearings go and your snap ring. All right, so let's start. Lay this back down just like this. Get out my sealer. I'm not going to go crazy. Now this thing, when I took it apart, it didn't have any kind of sealer in it. It just had the gasket, nothing more. But, you know, why not put a little sealer? And that one, when I say a little, I mean a little. I'm just going to put a tiny, but I'll just put it on my finger. Like that. See that? So, a little dab. It's like Brill cream. Just a dab of do ya. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a little light, very light smear on this thing. And I can always clean up, you know, any excess I may have. So this part right here is important because this is again like where your crank seal and stuff is. Your seals are there and this is this gasket is also part of the air fuel mixture seal. So if this is leaking then it's just like your one of your crank seals leaking and it messes up your air fuel mixture. So it's important. I mean, why not? You know, let's put just a little bit on here. Let's just make sure that it's sealed. I mean, we're going to put the gasket, but let's not place all of our bait in just a piece of paper. Put a little bit of sealer here. Then this is for the oil cavity. That's all that's in here is where your bar and chain oil goes. A little dab, tiny little dab there. And again, you, if you go crazy with this stuff and you put too much, it'll end up getting in here and stopping up maybe this, this oil pickup hose that's there. We don't want that. All right, so I'm gonna start reach here, take me a rag, and I'm gonna clean up this little bit of extra that's here. Just like that. Let's get that out of there. Keep things as neat as possible. We've gone all this trouble to clean it and paint it. Let's keep it clean. All right, here's our gasket. And we're just gonna lay this thing on here and put it over the dial pins. Put it over your dial pins. That'll, that'll hold it there for you. And this little bit of gasket sealer that we put won't hurt a bit. All right, so we can put our next layer of gasket sealer on the gasket or on the other part. I'm gonna put it on the other part, okay? my finger there, you see that? Just a little dab. I'm just gonna keep it a little, uh, and like I said, this, this part right here is for the crankcase, and we wanna make sure that's sealed. Because an air leak right there will affect your air and fuel mixture, and we don't want that. And all of this will be in vain. I think a lot of folks rebuild carburetors and chase adjustment problems and probably have bought new saws for no other reason than they had air leaks with old crank seals, carburetor gaskets, and this crankcase seal right here. This is very important to have good and tight. Just a little bit more here. Because this is just, look how thin this is here. That's not much of a sealing area. Even with a gasket, that's not a whole lot, okay? There we go. All right. Let's get 
the things oriented back correctly. I'm going to put just a little bit of oil in here on these needle bearings. Make sure you can see me here. It's a little slot here where you can put oil in here those needle bearings. Put some around there. Oh yeah, you can see the needles there. Let's get that lubricated. We don't want to crank this thing up in any kind of a dry state, which you know I know you gotta have air and fuel for it to run, but why not give it a little give it a little love, so to speak. Alright, so flywheel is where? It's over there. And this is the flywheel side. It's got the crank and it's got the key. It has the key here. Flywheel's over here. Always remember that. Alright. So let's see here. Oh yeah, look at that. It's trying to go into the bearing already. Look at that. I pushed it in. A little wiggle. A little wiggle and it was in. Now the dial pins right here are what you are really dealing with with trying to split a crankcase more than anything is those dial pins. They're tight. When you go to put it in the hole, you immediately get resistance. Okay, make sure you can see this, all right? Here's the, here's the rod, everything's in there. Oh yeah, almost there. Okay, let's try some screws now. Let's see if the screws will reach. There's one, two, three, four. Let's just put those four in there for right this minute. I made a decent screwdriver here. Let me see what we got. I just want to get them started. I don't think I'm deep enough to start. Okay? We're not. I, this thing's got to go down a little more. Okay, so I went and got this big impact socket that I've got that I'll lay right on there. Again, the bolts. The bolts just won't quite reach. I need to go down just a hair more, and it's the where the bearing and the crankshaft there. I need to go down just a little bit more. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to lay this on here and give it just a little tap, wiggling it, making sure the dial pins are lining up. It's moving, okay? It's moving every time I. Tap it, it's moving. Oh yeah. See, I'm almost ready to get the screws on it now. All right. All right, the screws are pushing up. See, I've closed that gap up a lot. Clean this up. Especially this part here, you see this part. All right, there she is, sealed up all the way around okay so here's what you run into on this is that you know i pushed if you remember i pushed this crank down into this bearing by hand all right then i got up here and i 
hit on this part of the case with this socket. Pushing this part over the crankshaft. But it also crammed the crankshaft to one side. You see that? It's jammed in there to one side. So what I need to do now is come back, support the support this back side like this, just big socket. Sit it on there like this. I've screwed the nut back on here. And then just give this a little tap and try to knock this drive shaft, this crankshaft, excuse me, back center. Alright, so look at that. So you have three, that, that's got it. Make sure I stay down here where you can see it. It just needed a little tap. And you want to look at it and make sure that it's centered in this opening here. If it's not centered, and really looking at the counterweights is kind of the way to go. You look at those counterweights, you want to see the, basically the same gap on each side, and that's what we've got. It turns free and clear, no obstructions. Perfect. Okay, and there's the nut. Just screw that back off, set it aside, back in the bag for the flywheel. Perfect. Good to go. That's what I'm talking about, right there. So this brings us to the end of part four. In this episode, we got the crankshaft back installed, we got the bearings in it, we got the two halves back together with a gasket in it. And everything's good and tight and we're ready to continue on. Come back for the next episode, part five, where we're gonna continue the assembly, we're gonna put the piston, the rings, and jug back on it and start putting everything back together and getting it ready to start. So come back for part five.